Okay, so um, before we get started the next session, um, I'm just going to say that some of you have um, translation receivers um, for Japanese, channel 3, and for English, channel 4. Um, and if you have one, please make sure when you leave the room that you leave it in a box outside. Please do not take it with you. Okay, so the next uh, session is going to be Posture for Engineers by Mary Lou Lenhart. Okay, Thank you. Hello. Uh, as was stated, I'm Mary Lou Lenhart, and I'm here to talk to you about posture. Um, first, quick introduction. I am a programmer. Um, I work for White Hat Security, and I work remotely from Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, I'm also a yoga instructor. I trained there. Um, and this is my husband. He's an actor. And this is my cat. He's a captain. <laughs> and this is our other cat. She's Ophelia. She sleeps like this. Um, so on to business. So sitting is um, a relatively new phenomenon in human evolution. Um, as well as chairs, and uh, our body is kind of not built to sit for long periods of time. Um, we are built to stand, crouch, and lie down. Uh, when we sit for long periods of time... Sorry, can you turn off this down for your computer? Oh, I thought it was. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so when we sit for long periods of time, uh, things in our body start to not work properly. Um, because it's just th things not moving uh, quite as they should be. Um, so when it comes to posture, uh, the, the body um, is adaptable and it tries to be efficient. And so when you're sitting, um, certain muscles tend to uh, shorten, like your hip flexors, for instance. Um, things get weaker and... Uh, um, some muscles are overworked and some muscles are, are weakened, especially when we have bad posture. And this can tend to pull the vertebrae out of alignment in your spine, um, and this can cause sometimes very uh, seemingly unrelated symptoms. Um, so that brings us to uh, chiropractic, um, the idea that the spine is the center of everything. Your um, your spinal cord has ver all of the nerves coming out of it and they go to all different parts of the body. And so when a vertebrae, a vertebra is out of alignment, um, it can put pressure on the spinal cord or the nerves coming out of the spinal cord. And that can cause things to not work properly. So for instance, um, nerves that are going to your stomach might cause weird stomach problems. It seems unrelated to your back or your muscles or your posture, but it actually might be related and nerves connect to every part of your body. So, um, however, <laughs> uh, chiropractic is best combined with exercise. If we uh, don't strengthen the muscles um, that are weakened or if we don't stretch the muscles that are overworked, uh, then we just go back to the chiropractor over and over again uh, and it's kind of futile and may cost a lot of money at the very least. Um, thankfully, it is very easy to strengthen our posture muscles uh, or the, po the muscles related to our posture. And we can do this every day. So uh, a couple of things before we start. Um, every body is different. Uh, you may or may not be able to do certain things um, or maybe just not yet. Uh, everybody's journey is different. Um, everybody's abilities are different and that's totally normal. And so if you'd like to participate, uh, and there are only a few postures we have room for, to, for participation um, in this particular talk, but it is entirely optional. You don't have to. Um, and uh, if you decide to, if you decide to um, participate, just remember that everything should be uh, steady and you should be able to breathe comfortably. Uh, you, should risk, you should have no pain, and if you do, then um, backing off, there are modifications um, and things like that. And uh, if you have any questions at all after the talk about something specific, then um, definitely let me know. Um, trained yoga instructor, so I can help. So starting out, we'll talk about standing desks a little bit. 
um, they are a good solution, um, or at least part of the solution. However, um, we still have to use all of our muscles properly, and if we've all sat through school and work uh, for all of these years, um, then we may not be uh, good at that, and or it might be very tiring, um, and it can cause some problems. Uh, for instance, an overextension of the hamstrings, um, and so that can cause knee problems at the very least. Um, and we deal with this by um, really having a balance between engaging the calf muscles and the thigh muscles. So it causes a slight bend in the knee as opposed to what we might think of as straight uh, legs. So the first thing that we'll do, if this works, um, if you'd like to, you can stand up and, <laughs> and I will come out here. Um, and so what we're gonna do uh, is just stand and learn how to stand using all of our muscles. So we'll start um, by moving onto the outsides of the feet quickly, uh, and then think about pressing, pressing the uh, big toe down into the earth. So you can feel the arches in your feet lift when you do that. And um, so shoes are another phenomenon, uh, or new phenomenon in human evolution. Uh, so our feet might be a little weak, so that might be a little tiring, um, but that's okay. Next, we want to bend the knees. So if you bend the knees, you feel the calves engage. And then when you start to straighten the legs slowly, you feel the, the thighs engage. And so you're using both and you have a balance there. Um, and so already, <laughs> it might be more standing than you've ever done before. <laughs> um, so the next you wanna think about the tailbone and just envisioning it, kind of sending it down toward the floor. So still engaging thighs and calves and sending the tailbone down toward the floor. And then start to relax the shoulders, bring them up to the ears and then down the back. And so we're trying to open through the collarbone, um, but at the same time balancing the opening or the openness with uh, thinking about the lower ribs and uh, send, like kind of bringing those lower ribs in toward each other. So that'll engage the abdomen. So just like we have balance between the calves and the thighs, we have the balance between openness of the heart and the, close, or the closed offness of the abdomen. And the last thing that we wanna think about is the shoulders in line with the ears so that the, the um, head sits right directly on top of the spinal cord. So then we bring our hands down at our sides, and this is the most efficient posture that you can be in as a human. Everything runs properly, and if you don't stand off, it's really tired. So you may sit down, <laughs> and we will talk about some more. Maybe. So the first thing that tends to happen when we sit a lot, and especially in front of a computer or over a desk, is something called forward head posture. Um, so there should, like I mentioned before, there should kind of be a line from your ear to your shoulder. It should be in line. And um, just like in the picture, so there are front neck muscles, and there are, there's actually, um, a back muscle that spans all the way from your neck all the way down the middle of your back um, on each side. And um, these balance to keep your head where it is, um, right on top of the spinal cord. And when we tend to move our head forward, it puts undue stress and weight on these front neck muscles, and then the ones in the back become weakened. So, um, this can cause a lot of neck problems, and not to mention, you know, our head is forward, and our, our eyes are focused on the computer screen, so we're crunching the neck as well, um, the, the vertebrae in the neck. So the next thing, um, I will demonstrate this as best I can. Uh, you guys don't have to participate in this next one. Um, but exercising that trapezius muscle, and specifically this area, is what gets weakened. Um, and so we're isolating that area. So I will show you. So ideally, you sit down on the floor 
and you're up against the wall. And so your shoulders, uh, your shoulder blades are um, directly up against the wall and the head is up against the wall. And then you would breathe, um, you would breathe in and count for four as you move your head forward. And then you breathe out as you move your head back. You want your eyes to be in line. Um, you don't want to move a lot of up and down posture, or um, movement rather, with the head. Um, I do three sets of eight. Um, I try to do that every day, uh, and it's not easy. Um, but, uh, you know, remembering. But if, uh, and, and then between each set, um, just do gentle neck rolls to stretch those muscles. Um, so the next thing uh, is a muscle under the armpit here called the serratus anterior. And um, that helps to keep the shoulders relaxed and down the back. Um, we use a little bit in the last uh, posture, but in this next one, um, uh, we kind of isolate it a little bit more. So if you're down on the floor when you do this, um, ideally then you can just get on hands and knees and do what we call cat-cow in yoga. Um, but we can actually also do it in our chair. So if you would like to participate, um, you want to bring your um, hands to your thighs and ideally start with a straight spine. And then as you inhale, you bring the chest forward through the arms. Now, um, we're still engaging the abdomen. This is a back bend of the upper back, not the lower back. And so we inhale to move the heart forward. And then as we exhale, the belly button pulls into the spine. The shoulders round, the chin comes to the chest. So we can do that one more time. Inhale, open the heart forward, exhale, round the shoulders. And so um, that's a good one to follow up because uh, it also stretches the trapezius muscle in the middle of the back. So um, the next couple of problems that happen when you sit for long periods of time um, is extension of the abdomen, which means weak abdomen muscles and um, tight uh, front hip muscles or hip flexors. And um, this can cause chronic lower back pain uh, because the, the lumbar spine is uh, crunched. And uh, what follows that is anterior pelvic tilt, which is this one here. Um, this one is just to show the opposite of that, which um, happens a lot less often. Um, but this is more common. And uh, you know, again, uh, weak abdomen, crunched lower back, and it causes a lot of problems. Um, and it also causes uh, problems with the knees sometimes um, as well. And so, uh, so what we do first um, is exercise the abdomen. And we specifically do not do crunches. And the reason I say that um, is because crunches are sometimes less beneficial than they are um, potentially dangerous because they're easily done wrong. Um, and so I recommend um, an exercise ball. Uh, you get them um, the right size for your height so that your, when you sit, your knees are at a 90 degree angle as such. And you actually can just sit on it. Um, if you do that for a half hour, it's actually quite a workout. And uh, that's a really good start. Um, but I'll show a couple more. Um, and I'll just talk through them a little bit because they're on the floor, so it'll be hard to do. Um, so the first one is Navasana or boat pose. And um, the full pose shown at the bottom is actually very difficult. I can't even do it. Um, so that's why we have these modifi or modifications. And um, you, know, you know, you just kind of are wherever you are in that posture um, until you eventually uh, get to the full po posture. Um, and I would start with the hands down behind you. And really, sometimes even just bringing your feet down on the floor and doing just the hands down behind you. So you want to keep a straight spine. And um, you don't want to feel anything in the, in the front of the hip. And if you do, we lift the rib cage up and relax the shoulders down. So you're really focusing on the abdomen. The next one is called star open close. And this is my favorite because you just lie on the floor and, and then curl up into a bean on the one side. So I call it star bean. <laughs> um, 
And so uh, you just open up and then close on one side, open up and close on the other, and I do that uh, several times. And so, um, so I really like that one. Uh, one m potential thing that you might run into is um, is extension of the ribs. So you know you bring your arms up and you see where your ribs are, and then you might want to close them in, really engaging the abdomen. Um, we're going to skip that one because I might not have time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I want to get to this. So again, if you'd like to uh, participate and stand up. Um, and maybe everybody face the inner um, aisle or pick an aisle, because if, if you'd like to, um, <laughs> to face. But basically, we're going to come into a forward fold. Um, so you would stand up, and then from here, just bend the knees, hinge at the hips, and bring the chest toward the thighs. And uh, you know where you are. You know not everybody can touch their toes, and that's totally fine. <laughs> um, but you know, as you can see, there's modifications. You can use a block or a chair or whatever you have. Um, so what this does is open up the lower back and engage the abdomen. Um, and so that is a way to combat um, anterior pelvic tilt. <coughs> and then the next one, which is our last one. It's called halfway lift. So from the forward fold, you would bring the hands to the shins, which is not shown here, um, and basically make the number seven. And uh, you have a flat back, and your your abdomen is engaged, and your legs are engaged. And from and then if you you know want more, you bring the arms up. And basically, you know, it's engaging the abdomen and the legs because. Um, Strong legs yield a strong back. And um, so that's pretty much <laughs> uh, the extent of uh, what we can do. And so hopefully, I have given you tools <laughs> to avoid uh, bad posture. Um, and so, arigato. <laughs> Okay, so do we have any questions? Okay, so the question is, um, is, it, is it recommended to both stand and sit during the day? Um, or or some, some people in Silicon Valley will just stand all day. Um, actually, is this on? Sorry. Okay. Um, so actually, um, I think that uh, having the combination of standing and sitting is really best. Um, the stand, I have a sit-stand desk at work, so I can move it up and down um, as I need. Uh, because standing, so everything in moderation, <laughs> um, basically. Uh, and so it's OK to sit sometimes. Um, it's, and and I, I would say, too, you know, if you don't have the option to stand uh, at all at work, or um, then maybe just getting up once an hour, or um, you know, when you go home at night, don't sit down and on, the, on the couch and watch TV or, online or uh, play video games or things like that. You know, spend a, at least a few hours doing housework or something. Um, and that, that's usually something that will balance it out. Um, but yeah, definitely um, doing both is best. Okay. Okay. 
座ったりの例はあったんですがあの寝っ転がって仕事あのプログラミングをやるっていうのはどうなんでしょうか<笑>僕はなんかその方が楽なんです<笑>はい。Um, but、uh, probably getting up once an hour at least <laughs> doing something <laughs> is best. <laughs> Any more questions? はい、えーと、すみません、えー、大,大変、えー、楽しく拝聴させていただきました、えー、とであの僕たち日本人ってちょっとその身体文化っていう点で正座をしていたり畳があったり少しその違う部分があると思うんですけどその例えば日本人のエンジニア特有の姿勢とかなんかその。欧米の方の身体文化を持ってプログラミングしてる時と何か違う点みたいなところっていうのは何かお気づきになったところがあれば教えていただきたいんですけど。OK、so the question is,、um, you know, in Japanese culture,、uh, the posture might actually be different than what you see in the Western culture.、Um, can you give me a, a, an example? Because I actually don't know. ああえー、と独特っていうのはあの僕たちは和式便所でトイレをしたりするんですけど<笑>あのそういう姿勢が例えば欧米の方にはできないって言われてたりする中であのその伸ばすって言った時の感覚が正座でピッこう背中を伸ばすっていう感覚と立って背中を伸ばすっていうのがちょっと違うと思うんですね。なのでそういったところで例えば日本人特有のあこんな姿勢をするんだみたいなところが。お気づきの点があればと思って。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そうですね。はい、そ
it's probably better <laughs> to some degree than you know sitting in a chair though. <laughs> I know them. Okay, we have time for one last question. Um, so the question is, um, do I incorporate mindfulness and uh, that kind of yoga-related uh, um, meditation and things like that into my workplace? Uh, and if I do, an example. Um, I suppose not really in my workplace, uh, but I, I think that it would be great if everyone, or if, if everyone in my workplace wanted that, uh, then I, I certainly wouldn't mind giving a yoga class or something. Um, I, I think that it's probably good, you know, just to take time to breathe sometimes. Uh, you know, getting up and walking around once an hour is also about, you know, walking away from the work and letting your mind clear. And so, that's a that's a good way to incorporate that um, and and just coming back to your breath uh, you know deep um, abdomen breaths you know expanding the stomach um, as you breathe in and contracting it as you breathe out um, that actually uh, the abdomen is directly linked to the brain and it will calm you down <laughs> so that is actually a great way uh, to incorporate that, even even if you don't stand up, um, you, just sitting there and breathing um, is a good way to do that. Okay, so that's all the time we have for questions. So could we give a round of applause for Mary Lou?